Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You came through for me again on this 13th day of June 2021. Today is going to be probably, probably the shortest message that I have ever delivered. Moreover, this is not a sermon, not a sermon in the traditional sense of the word. This message today is strange. It is strange because God gave it to me. And there's almost next to nothing usual and ordinary about the workings of God. There is a group of people that need this message. Maybe a church. Maybe a church that God is sending this message to. It could be a business group, a non-profit, or some other type of organization that God wants to receive this strange message today. This group, whoever you are, wherever you are, you need to know what to look for. God wanted me to tell you that you need to know what to look for. You need to know what qualities and essentials to look for in your next leader. Yes. This is a brief message about leaders, leadership. No subject, no text. Cut and dried. But if I was forcibly compelled to take a text or a message, it would be that passage where Paul said to Timothy that uh, you're a good boy and that you've been trained from a child up. Your great, your grandmother Eunice uh, taught you and you come into this business of the gospel as a child. I'd use that as a text. If I had to choose a subject, it would be, the subject would be courageous reformers, R-E-F-O-R-M-E-R-S. I want to remind you or say to you that if an organization is deformed, if a person is deformed, they need to be reformed. Something's not right. A reformation is in order. God, my friend, in his Bible shows mankind, all of mankind, many things. Uh, many things that are what we might call essential qualities of leadership embodied in innumerable Bible characters, which I will not name at this point. But my objective in this message is to 
present uh, just a handful of essential leadership qualities uh, and perhaps in another message I will give you a long list of the names of individuals that possessed these uh, essential qualities for leadership. In other words, what I'm going to do is set out a few of the elements of that can be found in a courageous reformer. The first essential has to do with genetics. Uh, leadership has to be in your bloodline. Something just run into the family as in the case of Timothy. Number two, the second essential of a courageous reformer is that that man or woman must be a lover of truth. A lover of truth. Number three uh, is the necessity of a praying grandmother. Now, this is different from the genetics factor in number one. A praying grandmother is going to make provision for the training, for the godly training of her uh, siblings throughout the generations. A praying grandmother, number three. You want to make sure that you have the right captain piloting your ship. Number four, that man ought to have a vigorous and effective prayer life. Number five, he must be fearless. He must be brave. Papa Floyd told us out at Little John in Compton, he said, boys, God can't use a coward. Cowards have no place in leadership. Finally, and I'm almost gone, I'm going to give you this next one and get on out of here. I told you this would probably be the shortest message that I ever delivered. Number six, the ability to make quick decisions. That is a necessary factor in great leadership making quick decisions. Here's my closing thought. This is going to be a 10 minute message. Eight minutes already gone. My closing thought is this. It comes in the form of a question. What is the best time to go shopping? To go house shopping? What is the best time to go looking for a house to buy? You think on a pretty sunny spring day? No. The answer is the best time to go shopping for a house, looking at a house, evaluating whether or not you're going to buy it is it ought to be rainy weather. At the best time to tell whether a house is a good buy or not. Because 
water is the number one enemy to a house. Rain points out the weak spots in real estate purchases. And so it is with courageous reformers. They ought to come aboard amid a crisis. Choosing a house to live in is not unlike choosing a leader. My friend, now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy, now unto him, the only wise God, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now henceforth and forevermore. You can be a courageous reformer today. Goodbye.